Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is going to be called Interrogation Letter from Medina by Sneeko. He already made a um, letter from Mecca and now he made a letter from Medina. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All the footage you're about to see is already in the hands of the U.S. government. As I returned to my native country after a month in the Middle East, Border Patrol decided I was randomly selected to download the data on all my devices. Sitting in the interrogation room while a technician wrote down my passcodes, it occurred to me how fortunate I was to not be a terrorist. Imagine how much panic you would be in if you had a bomb in your backpack. In hindsight, wearing an Arabic thobe was not the most strategic decision in an American airport. My bags were inspected and I saw all the gifts from Muslims being carefully manhandled with rubber gloves. A pretty lady was then tasked to interrogate me while US Customs read my text messages. She was getting bored with the questioning as it became obvious I didn't have nuclear codes and I thought- So yeah, for just a little, little background, he was, he came back from, from spending a month in, um, in, in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca and Medina. So he fasted the whole, he spent the whole month of Ramadan there. And then when he came back, the customs, I don't, I think the customs from the US randomly selected him and checked him for like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, like he said. Um, and they were going through his text, they, were, they went through his, through his phones, his cameras, his belongings, and he had to give them passwords and stuff like that. So. He's explained that right now. Back to when the senator of Michigan played my stream in a committee. The spread of the hateful, dangerous, and extremist content that has motivated real world violence. That was two years ago. A year later, I met the president. 11 years before, all I had was a dream. Strangely enough, I always knew and perhaps decided I would be exactly here in the interrogation room. The interrogation lady asked about my time in Saudi Arabia, so I politely mansplained the significance of Ramadan, how charity is required in Islam, and how my community raised $100,000 for hungry people. She scribbled some notes in a pad. To the Muslim, good deeds act as the sole currency to purchase a spot in heaven. Her woman brain didn't understand it. You really had to leave the country for- It's not a woman brain, it's, it's the West brain, the US brain. It's not a woman brain. Any, any, any woman in any other part of the world would have understood this. But since you're coming from, from, from the Middle East and you're coming to the U.S., to the West, it could have been a guy and he would have not understood this. So For a month to do this, I told her time away from Western distractions allowed full focus on Eastern solutions. For a month, I was only around people who agree with me instead of around people who radicalize me. The trip began in the Mecca of the world. Mecca. Expensive if you like luxury, but the mental clarity is worth the investment. But the interrogator didn't understand why an American would go to Saudi Arabia for one day just to then fly to London. As she kept prying, I realized this definitely wasn't a random selection. So I explained in the most un-terrorist way possible, I simply went to Mecca to make a plan. And within that day, I gathered all the biggest names in Dawah together for the first time. The technician walked in interrupting her questioning to get the correct passcode for my backup phone. I gave the wrong code, hoping they were lazy. This phone contained the memories of my life in New York City, a time where I had no money, no faith, but ambition and creativity. And the only incriminating information there was maybe pounds of weed and possibly an unlicensed firearm. I was calculating the statute of limitations in my head, then flashbacks of that life hit me. Back in New York City, I would have never been pulled into an interrogation room. A fraction of the popularity, but with access to all the platforms I'm now banned on. A man without faith is simply not a threat. The technician fumbled the phone with his rubber gloves as I handed it back. My coworker said he's seen you on YouTube before. He pointed a purple finger at me. What do you do? What do I do? I thought about telling him the- They're acting like they don't know who he is, so, so they can make it look like it was a random search. But believe me, and trust and believe, as soon as he stepped on that plane in the airport, they had all the information, background information, where is he from? What does he do for a living? How much money he got? Everything down to a T. So they just try to, to make it look like, oh, this is a random selection and we're going to search you for 45 minutes and you're going to have to give us a password to your phone and everything. And we're going to just, it's a random selection. 
those broke New York City days doing stand-up comedy and random jobs, he was about to see him anyway. He might be so entertained by memories paired with personal context that I wouldn't be convicted. Investigating an intimate life story paired with so much public information, it redefines the term autobiography. What do I do? I thought maybe I'll explain that I've been banned for years on BotTube and my existence is kept alive by talentless haters. Instead, the interrogator just said I stream on Rumble. I didn't correct her, but I still wasn't in the clear. And before the technician left to finish breaching my privacy, he asked how I was trapped in a cage with a tiger. He must have been bored with my phone's lack of terrorism. I relaxed. Hey, maybe the Middle East isn't so bad after all. They laughed, and I knew I beat the case. You cannot blame employees of the government for holding a bias created by decades of war propaganda. It's easy to forget when an Arab steps in line in airport security, every American still does a triple take. While the download slowly completed, the interrogator made small talk about her job. How usually drug traffickers and pedophiles get caught because of the photos in their phone. About the innocent smile on an illegal immigrant's face when she reads their rights in a language they don't understand. Because of her job, she knows about Ramadan and the importance of the holy city Medina. One of the few places left in the world where the collective goal is worship. The city where kids are confused why I'm even allowed with arms covered in tattoos. The tranquility drew me there much longer than I planned to stay. Medina is busy enough to be a music festival five times a day, but safe enough for kids to be kids. There is so much paranoia in American air, I had forgotten what it feels like to be comfortable around strangers. It's the perfect place to finish a month of fasting and join a random Indian family for Eid celebration. Eating there after sunrise with the Patel family, I realized weirdly, I was gonna miss fasting. Not the lack of food and water, but the discipline you learn. Hearing the Facts. prayer call on the roof alone, yet accompanied by my brothers from around the world in the Middle East. I pray one day the interrogator sees this video and curiosity pulls her to explore the secrets of Medina for herself. From the steps inside the very first mosque ever built, all the way to the mountains where companions seeked refuge in the midst of holy war. Overlooking the beauty of where this religion of Islam began, I was reminded of the domino effect that triggered my eventual presence right here. The contradiction of a mind carrying youthful ambition amidst the glamorous distractions of America's empty temptations. The interrogator was warming up to the God talk. She opened up. The worst thing she sees on the job are the phones of the Palestinians. As she began describing what she's seen from the videos on their phones, she cried. I changed the subject. Palestinians have a strength their enemies lack. She wiped the tear and gained composure. Those terrible videos are of people now in eternal paradise. When a Muslim dies for the sake of God, they attain the highest rank in heaven. No wonder the enemy is jealous. There is no missile that defeats faith. My privacy was taken and my phones were returned, so the interrogator walked me out the airport. I would shake your hand goodbye if you didn't tell me it's not allowed. I wondered if she was flirting and then prayed to God she never sees my Snapchat. Hey, you know what? Sneeko cooked with this. This is a perfect, perfect summary of what he went through, especially for the whole month of Ramadan, and what he had to deal with coming back, and the things that he experienced how he felt and it, it just sounds great and it sounds like he's really happy and maybe one day maybe he'll finally make his mind up and, and and move back not move back move forward to the to to possibly live in the in in the Saudi Arabia around you know Medina and Mecca but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And if you come across this video, subscribe because I'm going to be streaming his Rumble streams. Because even though I, I get demonetized for it, I, I stream it for the people that can't access it. So, yeah. Yalla.